Good morning once again. Last week, we started looking at our relationship with God and the whole thought process of uncomplicating our lives, getting back to the basics, getting back to the simple truth where life is good, where it's easy, where our focus is where it should be, which is on God. And we've talked about things such as our time. We've talked about things such as our relationships with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We've talked about things such as our financial resources. And now we are looking again at the relationship between us and God. You know, last week, if you were here, we kind of looked at the Pharisees. And Jesus talked directly to the Pharisees. And the Pharisees at the time were these in-between. They were the religious leaders that were there in trying to lead Israel, waiting for the Messiah, to the point that they didn't see Jesus Christ as the Messiah right in front of them. And what else they had done, and what Jesus really attacked them for doing, is in trying to honor God. They had made up over 600 of their own rules and laws. In trying to honor God, they had done these things. The intention was good, but in that very thing, they got caught up in the legalistic part of their own rules and forgot what the simple truth was to love God. You know, we we kind of ended with the scripture that I want to start off with today. It was Matthew chapter 23, verse 11 and 12, and it says this, Jesus speaking as he's addressing them. He says, but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. You see, our only way to God is through Jesus Christ. And the example that Jesus gave us of what we're to do, both in His Word and in truth, when we look at how Jesus lived His life, is we're to step back. And we're to put others first. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we thank you once again for allowing us to come into your house today. God, we do thank you for the leadership that you have given our country. We do thank you, God, for for the men and women, the abilities that you've given them to serve this great country. And we would like to honor those who've paid that ultimate sacrifice, Lord. And we just ask your mercies upon them. God, we now ask you to be with the message that is coming out of my mouth. May it be your message. May the words I speak today be of your word, Lord. May it be your message. May it hit us right where it needs to, Lord. May we be able to take it in our minds, absorb it, and to be able to just constantly step closer and closer to you. For we love you, and it's in Jesus' most precious name we do pray. Amen. So how is it that we have the best relationship we can with God. You know, I asked a question towards the end of last week's sermon, and I said, what's keeping you from being godly? What's keeping you? What's getting in the way of your relationship with God? And I even threw some distractors out there. I said, is it your job? Is it the pursuit of your job? Is it your family? Is it your friends? Is there something else in life? What is it that's getting in the way of you and your relationship with God? And you remember the challenge that I said at the end of that? If there's something between you and God, it's your responsibility. See, all those distractors are excuses. Granted, they're still there. Granted, we don't want them there sometimes. But our relationship with God, if we're not where we need to be, We need to look in a mirror because our relationship with God has totally to do with us and following His Word. You know, I want to read today from the book of Matthew chapter 22, starting at verse 34, if you would read along with me. Jesus uh, uh, has, has been teaching his ministry. He's starting to, to uh, be attacked a lot from, from different religious leaders. And he's asked this question in which they're trying to trick Jesus. And it starts off at verse 34. It says, But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathering together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love thy Lord, thy God, with all of thy heart, with all of thy soul, with all of thy mind, for this is the first and great commandment, and the second like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You know, what I think Jesus is saying there, we've got this word all. 
all mean in everything that we can think of. But the first thing I see Jesus telling us as we look at this scripture and we try to examine our relationship with God is keep it simple. Y'all ever heard of, of the, the KISS method? You know, keep it simple and you know the other word that goes along with it, right? I tell you, for me in life, I complicate things. Does anybody ever do things backwards the first time? Every time. You just know that when you do it, you're going to do it backwards. In fact, it took me several years to figure out that all the directions for putting things together now, you know, when you buy toys for your kids or some kind of uh, tool or whatever, everything comes in three or four different languages. I kept thinking they were sending me the wrong language. I didn't have enough sense to turn it over and flip it backwards, and I would find English. You know, I'm always doing something backwards. It's the same way with my whole career, my job, everything I've done. I started working first, and I decided to go to school. And lo and behold, now I have figured out that the Lord wants me to preach. Why didn't I start off doing that? I don't know. But everything in life, it seems, that I do it backwards. Why is that? You know, don't we have wise people that tell us, Carney, that's not going to be the best thing that happens. This is what you need to do. If you have told me that in your life, raise your hand. I know there's some of you. Y'all, oh man. All right, James, come on now. Get that hand up in the back. There we go. He needs to throw both his hands up in the air. But I have done things backward. Has anybody else ever complicated very, very simple things? We always do it. But you know what? When it comes to our salvation, Jesus says, keep it simple. We don't need to overcomplicate things. You know, these Pharisees, again, had made up, and Jesus is, a, is talking to the Pharisees. They had made up over 600 laws, their own laws, to make sure that they were devout in following what God had given them in the Ten Commandments and in Exodus and Leviticus when it came to ceremonial laws. So God gave them exactly what He wanted them to do to be in a right relationship with Him, and they went on top of that and said, wouldn't it be great if we make sure we do this by adding another 630-some laws? Good thing, good point, good intention. But over time, they took their sight off what God had said and again got caught up in what man says. Jesus says, keep it simple. You know, he tells us in verse 37 again, he says, all of thy heart, all of thy soul, all of thy mind, love the neighbor as yourself. Every one of us understands what all means, but we certainly have trouble getting there. You know, God loves us so much. He truly loves so much. And this whole thought of keep it simple. Let me throw some more verses at you. Some of you, this will be a review but the good Lord tells me that it just may not be a review for everyone. First of all, God, John 3.16 says what? It says, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that who shall ever believe in Him shall not perish but receive eternal life. You see, God loves you. God loves me. And whether you think He loves you, whether you have a relationship with Him or not, God loves you individual. He made you. He planned your life. He's got you right here for a reason and a purpose. God loves you. It is that simple. The second thing He says is even with God's love, we're sinners. Even though God loves us so much and that He made us and He put us here, we all fall short. We are sinners. Romans 3.10 says there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23, for we've all sinned and we've come short of the glory of God. You see, the simple message is God does love us and also with that even in his love we make mistakes now I don't know about y'all but I made several this morning I forgot to say yes ma'am several times and I have paid the price for that you know <laughs> but the real message here that we're looking at God loves you and even with God's love we're sinners but because of that God loves us so much that he gave us a remedy for that sin Romans 6 23 says for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord what an amazing love. John 1, 12 says, But as many received him to him, he gave the power to become the sons of God of those who believe on his name. You're part of the family. You don't like something about your family. You got somebody in your family that you don't feel like is giving you the love you respect. God has adopted you if you will just open your eyes and say, I'm here with you. That's the simple message in the love of Jesus Christ. He loves you. He knows we're going to sin. And so he makes a way for our sins to be forgiven. And he makes a promise in Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Today, right now, 
You see, that's the simple message of Jesus Christ. And that's how simple our relationship with God is supposed to be. But we complicate it. Y'all want to talk about complicating now. Go to a church board meeting in our church or any other church. <laughs> you want to see complication in action? It will come. You know, where two or three are gathered uh, in the Lord's name, the Lord is there too, and it is needed. You see, when we come together and we look at things, we can come up with all kinds of complications. And a lot of times those complications come because we start looking at us. We start looking at the way we want things to be. And we complicate life. That's the reason our life is right where it is. Because of the things we wanted, we have placed ourselves exactly where we are right now. Hopefully, many of you are saying, you know what, I'm in a good place. I know the good Lord has me in His hands, and everything's taken care of. I've never gotten into financial trouble. I've never had worries in my life. I'm good now because I know God has me. And I know many of us say, God has me. But I've got a whole lot of these other worries that are still there. And most of the time, those worries are there because we've placed them there. Now, there are certainly times that's not the case. There are certainly unforeseen circumstances that come up. Nobody calls for their health to decline. Nobody calls for bad things to happen in their family. We don't call on those, and we don't cause them. But they do happen at times. But the simple message here of us getting closer to God, first of all, is to keep it simple. The second thing I want us to look at is God wants all. He doesn't use any other word here. The word that has been translated for us to look at here is all. Not part, not what you want to give. God wants all. He wants all thy heart. Our focus needs to be God, but not on the need to do things right, not on what worried about wearing the right thing, to, to walk in the right way, to stand up at the right song and sit down at the right time, and not what people want out of me. God wants all of your heart, meaning that in everything you do, you remember and you look and you see the blessing that God has put in it for you. And I'm telling you, in everything, both good and bad, we can find the blessing of God. He says, in all thy heart. He says also, in all thy soul. We need to understand that everything we have depends on God's grace and His gift for us. He says, all thy mind. In everything we do, we look for God, keeping focused on Him. You know, sometimes things happen that, that uh, just, I mean, I sit back and it's the wow factor. I say, wow, God has got to be in this. I mean, let's look at this blessing. Let's look at what has happened in so-and-so's life. There's no other way to explain it. Wow, that's great. God's in there. But you know what we forget to do sometimes when we see somebody who's struggling? We don't say, wow, God's in there. We kind of shy away from that. We kind of shy away from even talking to the person who is going through a stressful situation. God is at work in the stressful situation. Whatever it is you're going through in life, God is right there beside you. And if you will allow, God will teach you something as you are there. You see, in everything, with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, we are looking at those things and saying, Thank you, God. I don't like this at all. I wouldn't put me here. <coughs> But I know I'm here. I'm still here for a reason. And you've got purpose for me. So open it up and show me what it is you want me to do. For our relationship to be good with God, He wants all. You know, if changing how we spend our time, our relationships with each other, how we spend our resources all around serving God, if we're, if, if we're honest with ourselves... If we look at these words all, how successfully, how successful are we? How successful are we at spending our time with God? How successful are we at spending, giving God back His resource? How successful are we in doing things from the great commission that God tells the church that it needs to do? Do we devote all or do we devote little you see, God says, I want all. It's just that simple. But you know, here's what happens to us. We start getting in this point in our life that we say, you know what? I think I'm going to take God up on that. I want to try to give Him my all. But I'm just too bad. 
I just can't do it. I've done too many bad things in my life. I can't make that next step closer to God. He's never going to forgive me for what I've done. And I've done some bad things. He's never going to forgive me for the thoughts that I've had, for the relationships that I've broken, for the things I've done in life. My third and final point for you today to get closer to God is sometimes we have to plainly forget the past. You know that's scriptural? You know that's spiritual? It's exactly what the Bible tells us to do. To not look back, because we can't go back to yesterday and change one thing about it. We can do nothing about yesterday, and we can't control tomorrow. We are here today for God's glory. You know, Paul writes to the book, uh, in the book of Philippians, he writes to the church of Philippi, and he does this to continue to encourage them in their efforts. And four big themes he says in there, he tells the church of Philippi, he says, there is joy in serving for Christ. There is joy in suffering for Christ. There's joy in believing in Christ. There's joy in giving. And I want us to conclude by looking at one particular part here that he talks about in Philippians chapter 3, starting at verse 12. He says, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that may apprehend, that for which also I apprehend of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I, count myself to ha I do not count myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus." It's hard for us to understand what he's saying at the very beginning. But what he's saying is, you know, I've been trying to grab on. I've been trying to apprehend to obtain certain things. And I'm not fully mature. But I want us to stop right here and let's look at Paul's life for a minute. Years before this very letter, Paul is killing Christians. And he's doing it because he thinks it's the right thing to do. He's persecuting Christians. He doesn't see Jesus Christ as the Messiah. So he's leading stonings against Christians. He's out persecuting them. And Jesus Christ makes an intervention in Paul's life. And from that time forward, Paul puts all of his education, all of his boldness, all of the God-given abilities and the blessings through the Holy Spirit to God's work. And Paul says, even though I've had all of these things happen in my life, all this bad, I don't deserve what Jesus Christ has done for me, but even with all of this, I'm moving forward. And I've done some good things, but I still haven't obtained what I need to obtain. He's still reaching. He's still reaching for more. And he says, you know what? Yesterday no longer matters. Yesterday's gone. I'm living right here in today, and my thing to do is to reach further. We're to reach further. And he says, when we're doing that reach, we're to be doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, when we look at these things, the high calling of God in Jesus Christ, I want to talk to three, in, three individual groups here. First of all, understand the seasoned Christian. If you consider yourself to be a mature, seasoned Christian, I'm not putting this on you. You decide where you fall in this group. But if that is you and you think you're this person, then Paul's talking to you. No matter where you think you are in your life, how good your relationship is with God, Paul is saying, you know what? Still, forget about yesterday. We're to continue on to the high calling of Jesus Christ. There is more for you to do. My friends, if you are here today in any state whatsoever, whether things work, whether they don't work, whether something hurts, whatever it took, if you were here today, God has got purpose for you. Amen? Amen. We are not going home until Jesus Christ calls us there. And we are here to do the mission of the church. And the mission of the church in the Great Commission is to go ye therefore preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the church's job is to equip us, the saints, to be able to go out and do that task. And as long as we're here, there is purpose somewhere for us to do that. And so to the seasoned Christians, Paul is saying, don't be content, continue to reach on. And you know what? The second group I want to say is somewhere in between. We've accepted Jesus Christ into our life. We've brought Him in. And we're kind of sitting here and we're trying to grow, but there's so many complicated things around. I'm calling upon you and Paul saying the same thing. Forget what's yesterday. Forget the things that are complicated. Forget the things that are holding you back and do God's work. He says, continue to reach. And for those who haven't found Jesus Christ yet, those who are sitting at a point and have heard the preacher talk, maybe have read something, maybe have studied something on your own, but are still not sure. Paul's talking directly to you. He's saying, forget all the bad. 
Forget, forgive yourself. Let these things go. People may not forget. People may still bring things up that just stay in your mind that continue to knock you down. But Scripture tells us God will. He will forgive. And so if you're in that point in your life where you've never accepted Jesus Christ because you just don't think you can, because you just don't think there's any way possible God could have enough love and grace for you. And Paul says, forget yesterday. He says, forget this morning. Reach further. Reach to tomorrow. In the name of Jesus Christ. You know, I want to uh, reiterate one more time as I close. God loves you. John 3, 16. He loves us all so much that He gave His only begotten Son. So if we simply believe, we don't perish. But even with this love, we all sin. We all fall short. There's none righteous, no, not one. We all sin and we all come short of the glory of God. But He loves us so much, He made this bridge, this remedy between our sin and salvation. For the wages of sin is death. And because of sin, we shall have death. But the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. But I love John 1.12. It says, But as many received Him, to them He gave the power to become the sons of God. Would you like to be in that family? Would you like to have God's arms stretched down and just pull you in in a bear hug like you've never felt in your life? To have an emptiness filled that you've tried to fill with all kinds of other things. But they're only temporal. They do not last. God loves us so much He made us a remedy. And He says, right now today, whosoever shall call upon of the name of the Lord shall be saved. My friends, wherever you fall in that category, seasoned Christian, in the in-between slope, and years don't do it. You can say you've been a Christian 40 years, but you can still be at the first step. You can say you've been a Christian 40 years and never truly allowed Jesus into your life. So wherever you fall, seasoned, new, or you haven't found Jesus Christ yet, if you haven't, find Him today. If you're just at that verge where you're asking God, what is it next? Don't look back. Reach on. And even if you're doing what you think is everything you can for God, look for that next opportunity. In the example that Jesus tells us, to love God with all of our heart, all of my soul, all of my mind, to love you as myself. That message is talking to you today. Have the strength and the courage to meet me here. And let's go to the Lord together. It's Kathy or DJ.